It's time for Florida State football. This is Inside Seminole Football. Inside Seminole Football is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Ram, come in and get a great deal on the best trucks during Ram Power Days. Nick's Toggery. Hello everybody and welcome to Inside Seminole Football. I'm your host Tom Block and coming up over the next hour we'll take a look back at Florida State's win over Louisiana Monroe that got the Knowles Bowl eligible for a college football all-time best 36th consecutive year. In addition to looking at those highlights we'll also hear from Florida State Director of Athletics Stan Wilcox about the future of Florida State's football program. Obviously the Knowles are shopping for a coach with the departure of coach Jimbo Fisher. We'll take you inside the locker room and get more from coach Odell Hagens, the interim coach who's now unbeaten all time as FSU's interim coach. And it was a uh, emotional locker room. I can share that with you. And we'll also look ahead to that matchup in the walk-ons independence bowl for Florida state, which comes up just after Christmas day. All that and more is straight ahead. So stay with us here on inside Seminole football. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football. For just the ninth time in Florida State history, the Knowles played a December home game. Obviously, the contest with Louisiana Monroe rescheduled because of Hurricane Irma. And let's take a look back now at the first half highlights. Here are the sights and sounds from Florida State's big win. Here is the kick, and we are underway. End over end, deep into the end zone. Marcus Green will take a knee. Shotgun formation, sidecar right, Derek Gore, and they'll run the ball this time to the left side, and not much running room at all for Derek Gore. Here's the snap, dropping to throw left side. Got a little screen set up on the near side. Tackle made short of the 35-yard line. Hine gets a good snap and puts a right toe into it. Booming punt. Underneath it, waiting around the 22-yard line. Matthews makes the catch to the 30. Matthews to the 35. Slips it and digs it away. He broke a tackle. Gives up ground. He's hit from the side and dropped to the 40-yard line. James Blackman takes the snap. They threaten the blitz. Here it comes. Pass, swing pass. Caught by Jarquez. Patrick on the left side edge. Tripped up by the ankles and dropped to the 42-yard line. In that ball game from the 42. And the ball off. Patrick Daylight across the 45 to near midfield. He is at the 50-yard line. He has a Florida State first down. Shotgun formation, the snap, second down and 10. Blackman's first pass, caught ball, Ermin Lane 40. Inside the 40, 35, stiff arm to the 30 yard line. There's a motion across the formation, toss pitch, come to the right side, near side it is. Akers, Akers will get down the sideline to the 24 yard line. Second down and five from the 24, dropping to throw. Blackman throws a pass, shot, it's caught at the 14 yard line. Nyquan Murray. A dart thrown by James Blackman, and the Seminoles get their third first down. 13-yard line in motion. The toss pitch comes to, running to the right side. Inside the six-yard line comes Keith Gavin. In motion, Gavin hand off to Jarquez Patrick. He needed one for the first down, and he got it. High formation with an extra blocking back. Hand off, running right up the gut is Patrick. He refuses to go down. He's into the end zone. Touchdown of his June. Boy, he bounced off the right guard, popped it off to the left, and found the promised land. Here is the snap out of the gun, pass to the right side, got a bubble screen. We missed the tackle to the 20, to the 25, to the 30-yard line, and knocked out of bounds. Here's the snap out of the gun, pass to the right side. It is a caught ball, first down achieved at the 45-yard line. It takes two Seminoles to bring him down. Two running backs in the backfield. Looks like an old wishbone with the ball. Caleb is going to run the ball. The quarterback across midfield. He's to the Florida State 45-yard line, Caleb Evans. 26th of the nation. Toss pitch left side running. Leverage outside the numbers to the 40 to the 39 yard line before FSU can make the tackle. Second down, they'll play action fake pass to the far side. Just getting rid of the ball. Oh, it's almost picked off. Great effort on the far side of the field. That pass was, just, he was trying to just throw it away. And a Florida State 7 almost had the pick. Nate Andrews. Well, would that have been something? Snap and puts toe to it end over end. Kick and DJ Matthews tries to dig him out and the ball bounces to the one yard line and is killed short of the goal line. From the six yard line, the snap. They'll run the ball to the left side. It is Jacques Patrick made one guy miss, drags a tackler with him. He is gonna be brought down. He'll lose a yard or two. 
The snap, pass to the near side, caught ball at the five, to the 10, to the 14 yard line, but short. Blackman takes the snap and they said the blitz, pass to the near side, caught ball at the 20, Inspectors to the 25, to the 30. He is knocked out of bounds at the 38 yard, 36 yard line. Here's the snap and Blackman drops. Looks, he's gonna run the ball. Blackman will slip and slide and get it out to the 42 yard line. Blackman to quarter, blitz threat. He'll feed the ball to Akers running to the right. He's gonna get the sideline. First down across the 50. He's to the Warhawk 45 yard line. Here is the snap. They threaten the blitz. They run a stun up front. Blackman's pass downfield. It is intercepted, picked off at the 28 yard line. Intercepted by ULM. Turnover Florida State as Jawan Offrey has the interception. His first interception of the season. Penalty. Penalty moves him back to the 22. Second down and 15 pass, a seam route, and it's a caught ball, one-handed catch at the 40-yard line. And the catch by Marcus Green, a remarkable grab. Shotgun set, Derek Gore, the running back, and dropping to throw, Caleb Evans pass. It's a caught ball on the far sideline, first down at the Florida State 36-yard line. From the Seminole 34, the snap, Caleb Evans pass to the foul, almost uh, caught at the 30-yard line, and a tackle at the 29-yard line. Here's the snap, dropping to throw, Evans dropping to throw, Evans, he's going to get the pass away, it is out of bounds, and incomplete. Blitz threatened from deep, dropping his Blackman, pass to the near side, caught ball at the 30, to the 35, to the 40-yard line, goes Jacques Patrick, he's still in bounds to the 40, inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Inside handoff, it goes to Cam Akers, slams his way across the line, and is at the 31-yard line. Sidecar right, here's the snap, Blackman drops, gets the pass, caught ball, inside the 20 yard line. It's another first down, Auden Tate has his first catch of the day. 17 yard line, run the ball to the left side, it is Cam Akers, slams his way across the line of scrimmage, off left guard, and gets it inside the 15. The 11 yard line, the snap, feed the ball to Akers, running left, got outside the numbers, down the sideline, inside the seven yard line, he's to the five. It is the first penalty on FSU in the game. Here's the snap out of the gun. Second down, a little longer. Second down, seven. Blackman's pass, a rope. It is caught ball inside the one. Touchdown, FSU. Great grab on a crossing route right at the one-yard line by D.J. Matthews. Wow. What a remarkable catch by that freshman from Jacksonville. Now swinging in motion was the receiver. They'll run the double reverse going back the other way, and the Seminoles make a tackle on the backfield. What a great play as Marcus Green on a double reverse is tripped up by the ankles and dropped, but I think that was Fred Jones Jr. Shotgun formation, see what he does here. He'll throw, dropping to throw, pressure coming, gets the pass away, caught ball, first down, right at the first down marker. Don't know if he got it. But it depends on where they spot the ball. And Caleb Evans hands the play action fake, passes the ball upfield, it is caught ball at the 49 yard line, Derwin James. Here's the play action fake pass to the near side. Got a screen set up on the fifth, the 50, and across the 45 yard line to the 44 goes Marcus Green. Three, the mark to make, the Florida State 41. Here's the snap, flag thrown out of an empty backfield, and running the ball is the quarterback, Caleb Evans, makes a guy miss and digs to the 30 yard line. On the left hip, here's the snap. Pass to the near side is caught by DJ Matthews. Matthews to the 30, to the 35, to the 37 yard line. Jarquez Patrick, the tailback, he'll get the call, running left, he slams across the line, he's got a first down and then up. It takes a gang of guys in white jerseys to bring him down to the 43. Patrick, the sidecar left, here's the snap, they said the blitzer picked up by Patrick, pass over the, it is incomplete, tried to hit Ryan Izzo at the 47 yard line. Catch, real soft throw, gotta have that sometime. Logan Tyler's first punt of the day will come down and is fair caught at the 18 yard line. Here's the snap on second down. After they run the football to his quarterback, Caleb Evans got a first down to the 30. He's at the 32 yard line and he's dropped at the 34. Moves to the right, tight end on the left edge. Here's the snap out of the shotgun formation. The quarterback's got the ball. This time he does not get much at all. Well, they allowed just 12.1 points a ball game. That was tops of the country. He's third down and 10. They run a screen across the line of scrimmage and not much running room at all. Well played by the Seminoles. Gets that kick away. It is a deep kick. Boy, he really got energy into that one. And the ball is caught by Matthews. Spins away from one defender. Will be nailed at the 10-yard line. Cam Akers, the setback. Inside handoff. Cam Akers running to his right. Got a seal block. Makes a guy miss. And he's across the 20. Out to the 23-yard line. And runs out of bounds. Out of the shotgun formation. Draw play. Handoff. And Cam Akers slams it through the hole at the right guard. And is out across the 25. The black one awaits the snap from Everly. Gets it. He'll feed the ball two acres running left. Got a seal. He's to the third. I'm making her Jacquez Patrick. Outside the numbers to the 40, to the 47, to the 50 yard line. He's down at the 49 on the final play of the first half. FSU will go to the locker room with a 14 0 halftime lead. 
So the Knolls with a 14-0 lead at the half, and of course they'll get the ball to start the festivities in the third quarter, and we'll look at those highlights in just a little bit. But coming up right after the break here on Inside Seminole Football, I had a chance to sit down with Florida State Director of Athletics Stan Wilcox to discuss the future of Florida State football. That interview is next right here. I am joined by FSU Director of Athletics, Stan Wilcox. And Stan, obviously it's been an anxious, anxious week in the, in the Florida State community, in the Florida State Athletics Department. And for you, I'm sure a lot's transpired in the, in the last 24 hours, in the last couple days this week. What did you uh, say to the team? What did you say to, to Coach Fisher as, as the week wore on? Sure. Um, uh, with Coach Fisher, you know, I just make sure that I let him know that we, uh, we really appreciated everything that he's done for us here. We really... I uh, still love him and would love if he could have uh, been able to stay, but <clears throat> totally understand, uh, you know, when you get uh, uh, an offer like he, that he got, you know, it's, you know, you can't turn those type of things down. So I can't blame him for that, and I, I wished him well. And uh, to the team, you know, the team, I just had to make sure that they understood that, uh, you know, they still have some work to do. Uh, that with the game today, as well as uh, as they move forward, uh, they have uh, they have to continue to go to class. They have to get their academics done. Uh, they've uh, got to understand that this football program was built uh, on a number of great players, great former players, and it's not about one person. And that they have to continue to uphold the tradition. And the, uh, and the great works that have gone before them, and that we have one of the premier, if not the premier, uh, football program in the country, and we're going to find the best coach that we possibly can that's going to come in here, that uh, this is a destination place. And they knew that, uh, that they would find, and, and that, that we would find, and we will have a great coach for them to keep leading them in the, in the positive direction. So, you know, obviously a lot of uh, kids that were, uh, you know, disappointed, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, with Odell coming in as interim, uh, an individual who I explained to them, here's an individual that helped build this program. He was in your shoes. He's still here. And uh, you've got to get behind him, and uh, you've got to go out there and show, the, show uh, our fans and our, uh, our supporters that uh, this is FSU, and we're representing something greater than any one person. Time frame to get somebody in place, and, and again, potential candidates? Uh, I can't give you any names, uh, but uh, yesterday would have been my time frame to have it done <laughs> yesterday. But, you know, we're looking, we got to move as fast as we possibly can. And I'm um, working with, obviously, the president and chairman, Ed Burr, to, to move as expeditiously as we possibly can. And we're, uh, we're very, very help, uh, hopeful that we'll be able to get uh, somebody in place uh, within a very, very short period of time. You know this, but for those who are concerned within the Florida State family about the current state of the program, what would you say? It is strong. It is great. Uh, we have, we still have a strong base. We have great kids. They, when they came here, they came here knowing that they were coming to a destination uh, place, a place that they wanted to be because of the tradition that was created, that uh, the, the championships. The uh, you know the legacy that was built by by Bobby Bowden, carried on by Jimbo Fisher, they know that this is where they want to be. So I really feel sh very 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 comfortable, uh, as well as you know the uh, our commits our recruits, they understand that they were committing to a a, a program, and uh, so uh, you know there are going to be some that are you know very concerned and uh, may uh, you know as we saw some decommits, but. But uh, our staff is continually to work on them to let them know that we're going to have somebody great in place within a very short period of time. So the state of the program is still in great shape, and we are continuing to move forward. All right. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Tom. Coming up next, second half highlights of Florida State and ULM on Inside Seminole Football.
Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football. Florida State with a two touchdown lead at the half, two quarters away from getting bowl eligible for a record 36th consecutive season. Let's take a look now at those second half highlights. Here's the staff, inside handoff to Jarquois Patrick trying to get outside. Good day. He finds the 30, down the sideline to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, outside the inside the 40, inside the 35 of the 30, Jarquois Patrick. The 27 yard line, the snap, Blackman drops back three steps, looks, fires left side, wide open receiver, he's got Urban Lane. Lane is tripped up at the 14 yard line. Here's the setback. Here is the snap of the handoff, running left, Cam Akers follows the blocker, inside the 10, follows another blocker inside the five. He's brought down to the three yard line. Here is James Blackman, takes the snap, feeds the ball, two acres, easy touchdown, Florida State. Huge block, wide open hole, Cam Akers finds the paint, the Knowles lead 20 to nothing. Toss deferred to the second half, but it pays a handsome dividend as FSU scores quickly. Here's a short kick field at the five yard line will be returned by Marcus Green. Green finds daylight, he's to the 30, to the 35, to the 40 yard line, and Marcus Green to the 47 yard line. And they converted two of seven third downs in the first half. Dropping to throw Caleb Evans past the far sideline, and it's a caught ball falling down at the 39 yard line. The 30 eight yard line it is. Rolling pocket now, a flow back pass. To the left side, got a convoy and no symbol near it. To the 430, to the 25 yard line. And tight end, Sloan Spiller is knocked out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Dropping out of the shotgun, quarterback Caleb Evans passes to the near side, got a wide open receiver at the 15 yard line, inside the 15 to the 12 yard line goes wide receiver Brian Williams. Tight end Spiller in motion, they'll run that way toward the left side, the quarterback and Evans has nowhere to go, he spins off a tackle, spins off another, and now is dropped for a one yard loss. Here is the snap, pressure coming. Evans under pressure, it's gonna to get to the 15 to the 11 yard line, he falls down. Well within his range, as long as 44. Good spot, the kick is airborne and it is good. ULM will not go back to Monroe, Louisiana without points on the board. Blackman throws the ball across to Auden Tate at the 34 yard line and Tate is blasted there by two or three Warhawk defender. Here is the snap, play action fake by Blackman, drops to throw, throws the ball, oh it's intercept, Goff, it's picked off of the 40 yard line, to the 30, down the near sideline, to the 20, tackle made right on the sideline, and knocked out of bounds. 6.41 to go in the third quarter, dropping back to throw, Gray, Ev Caleb Evans, moving to his right, stop, flushed out of the pocket, he's got to run to the 25, to the 20, outside the numbers, he's out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Here's the snap out of the shotgun four way pass on the left side. Got a screen set up for the tight end to the 15 yard line, to the 10 yard line. And Derwin James brings down tight end Sean Sloan Spiller. Gain of one, they'll swing. Marcus Green in motion, roll that way. Rolling pocket by Evans. Evans going to be flushed toward the sideline, gets rid of the ball, just threw it away. Incomplete. Third down goal from the six. Monroe looking, passes, uncaught ball at the three yard line. Touchdown, Louisiana Monroe. RJ Turner finds the paint in the south end zone and the Warhawks have scored their first touchdown of the day. Look out, Seminoles. Extra point just a moment ago. Kicks it short this time. Returnable by Rasul. Comes underneath it at the 10-yard line. Near side hash. Follows a block of Derwin James to the 25-yard line. Rasul to the 30. To the 35 to the 40. Rasul to the 48-yard line. Got a key block by Derwin James. That guy can play football, can he? We're going to take a look at it. Here comes the play. From a handoff. It goes to it. Cam Akers. Touchdown FSU. Akers replaces Jarquez Patrick. And he finds the promised land from the 24-yard line. He was a running backside car, right? He'll get the call. He's hitting the backfield. He's driven backwards by Jalen Wilkerson. Ball back and maybe run, but Wilkerson just absolutely flat. Him. Here's the snap. Caleb is under pressure. Flushed out. He's going to be dragged down for a sack back at the 25-yard line. We go after the block. Can't get to it. The kick is going to go to the far side. Returnable by DJ to the 40, to the 45-yard line. Made a guy miss to the 50. He's to the 45. Still on his feet to the 40-yard line. Blackman hands the ball off. Cam Akers running to his right. Zigzags back again inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. Second down six. Hand off to Akers. He sort of pulls his way inside the 32. Blitz threatened by a safety. Hand off to Jark West. Patrick running left. Got a seal block. Patrick outside the numbers. Still on his feet to the 5 3 2 1. Toe. Close to the touchdown. But a flag has been thrown. His second down and goal from the 5. Pistol for me. A handoff goes to Jark West. Patrick finds a little hole. Sleeps through about to the 2 yard line. And the running back is Jark West. Patrick. Here's the snap from the 2. Hand off to Jark West. Easy touchdown, FSU. He's got 2 today. And the Seminoles have scored 4 on the ground. Pass to the right side, a little swing pass that is caught by a running back out of the backfield, and there's no place for Derek Gore to go. He loses a yard. 
from the 24. They need to reach the 35. Dropping the quarterback. Throws a pass. Fade route down the far sideline. It is uh, going to be incomplete. Almost picked off by Tavares McFadden. Harrison Hine gets a good snap from the punter. Puts it in the air. Comes down slowly. And a fair catch is called for. And there's a flag thrown by the side judge. Right? Patrick play action. They got a bootleg rollout by Blackman. Throws the ball up. They've got a receiver wide open. It is Patrick inside the 35 to the 32-yard line. I beg your pardon, Trey McKinney. Number six and not number nine. His first career catch. Izzo in motion to the left of the formation. The snap from the 30-yard line. Hand off running to the left. Uh, Jarquez Patrick. Oh, what a nice move inside the 23 to the 21-yard line. But imagine. First down, 10 holes moving right from the 20. Inside handoff. Ryan Green. Daylight Green tripped up as he reaches the 15-yard line. By a safety inside handoff. Ryan Green gets outside, shakes the tackle. He's inside the 10. 5, 3, 2, 1. He is close, but not into the paint. Ryan Green saying, I'm going to make the best I can. A senior, a redshirt senior from St. Petersburg. Fred Jones shifts to the right. Here's the snap. He may have been moving too soon. Hand off to Ryan Green. Touchdown FSU. Green just lowers his shoulders and gets down low. And as you said earlier, William, the low man generally wins in football. He just did. He got a touchdown. Third down it is. Third down and seven. The snap dropping Evans. Throws to the right side. It is oh, almost caught. And it is caught inside the 30-yard line around the 25. Dropping the throw out of the gun. Under pressure, Caleb Evans now rolls to his left. He's got some running room. To the left he goes. He's to the 30, to the 20. He's tackled on the 28-yard line. Here's the snap. Caleb Evans looking. Pressure coming. It's a pass away. It is knocked down. Inside the 20-yard line. Nice defensive play. Little championship. Dropping back. Throw on fourth down. Pass across the route. Caught ball first. Oh, it's incomplete. Gun. Constantino slaps his hands. High snap. Hands the ball off. It is neighbors. And that may be his first carry of his career. And he runs. Up to the line of scrimmage for Winter Haven, I believe it is. Here's the snap. Casatino's pass, the far side. Caught ball at the 30-yard line. We will not get a first down. Stands around the 18. Puts total leather around the 20. And Marcus Green underneath it will try to return. He's dropped the ball. His knee hits the deck. And he will be tackled at the 26-yard line. Second down, seven. Play action, fake pass, a crossing route. Caught ball, tackle made at the 40-yard line. What a grab by Marcus Green. And then he got a tattoo by A.J. Westbrook. Go Campbell. Here is the snap on fourth down, fourth down. Evan pass is going to be caught. There will be a first down for ULN. There's that power hit, yeah. man. We were talking about Gino. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. He There's gets two another of one. Three. Two of them. <laughs> I love hey, it. Hey, uh, if you're a head coach, uh, it's one container of power eight. If you're an interim head coach, it's three containers. <laughs> there you'll hear the final cheer as Florida State faithful come to the ballpark today. The stadium, Doe Campbell Stadium at Bobby Bowden Field and become bowl eligible for the 36th consecutive season. That's a new NCAA record. Final score, 42-10. All the credit go to, goes to our football players. It's not about me being named the interim head coach. It's about those kids, resilient, how they fought. They didn't quit. Florida State, if you look at the South End Zone Stadium, unconquered. Remember that. We haven't gone anywhere, and we're not going anywhere at Florida State University. So Florida State gets the win. The Knowles get bowl eligible after obviously a tough 2017 season, but they are headed bowling. More on that is coming up in just a little bit. But immediately when we come back, we'll take you inside the Florida State locker room. It was an emotional affair as longtime Florida Stater Odell Hagens was the interim coach. You could truly feel the emotion and see the love the players have for this man in the locker room. We'll show you that when we come back on Inside Seminole Football. Today's final stats are brought to you by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites.
up, man? This is for y'all. It's not about me getting a tag. It's for y'all. That's what it's for. You guys went through a lot this season, but y'all kept fighting. That's what it's about. Now, unconquered. Uncomfortable. We still got the streak, the longest bowl streak in America. Coming up, Catherine Phillips sits down with Florida State senior linebacker Roderick Hoskins as he tells his Florida State football story. And we'll talk about Florida State's bowl game, Walk-On's Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. That's up next on Inside Seminole Football. Inside the Helmet is brought to you by Hyundai. Welcome to Inside the Helmet. I'm Katherine Phillips, joined by senior linebacker Roderick Hoskins. Roderick, growing up, did you play any other sports? Uh, I did track and basketball, that's about it. So why did you stick with football? I mean, I knew once I got to high school, that's what I wanted to focus on, football. I stopped doing other sports in middle school. Middle school, basketball, track. And once I got to high school, I just, it was straight football. So throughout your football career, who's been the biggest role model for you? Uh, I can say my mom. My mom has been the um, biggest role model for me, just seeing her go to work hard, going to work every day, just to provide for us. So that's what I look up to, she's my role model. So when your mom sees you playing in the Florida State uniform, what's her reaction? I don't know, she, she's very happy, I know. Every time, every, every time before the game, she, Give me a text, even after the game, she let me know how I did, and that she's very proud of me. So what is your favorite form of social media, and why? Mm, I say Snapchat. I think, I think Snapchat would be my most, most um, social media I like more. I'm not a very uh, interesting Instagram guy, doing it because of the season and stuff, but so in Snapchat, I'd be able to keep up with my friends and things like that. So are you posting stories throughout the day, or are you just I post watching a little, other people? I post a little stories of, of my day. It ain't that much interesting, but people don't um, seem to comment, comment something back on it. Do you have any hidden talent? Uh, no, nah, not really. Other than I'm good at matter. That's the only thing. Okay. So if you're not playing football, what would you be doing? I always wanted to coach like youth football. I know that's a big part, especially where I'm from. I know um, the coaches, it was a very, it was a huge impact for me. My coach, um, Robert Weathers, he was in the league, you know, he came back, taught us a lot about football and just made us want to go, go higher in football. So in youth football, is there a memory that sticks out as your first memory from youth football or your favorite one where you really started loving the game? Probably my first touchdown, my first touchdown. I remember that, that was my first time ever getting the ball. Caught, I mean, yeah, what it was, it was an interception, actually. Caught an interception on the goal line, ran it all the way back for 100 yards. I could just hear my mama running down the side, just screaming and screaming. And when I got back to the side, when I leave, she was just happy and stuff. The coaches, 
had to had to um, like get her from the get her like from the side because how happy she was from. So you remember your very first touchdown in youth football? What about that first time that you ran out of the tunnel at Florida State? That was it was it was like a dream come true because I never I I didn't think I would be at Florida State coming out of like high school because not too many people had that opportunity to go big where, I, where the school I came from. So it was like a dream come true. I, I couldn't really believe it at the time, but as the time went on, I realized I was here and that I made it. So it was a great feeling to me. So what was it about Florida State that made you know right away that this was the place for you? Um, The home visits and the coaches and just me growing up being a fan and coming here seeing how it is. It just really, it just really stuck to me and made me want to come here. In your time here at FSU, what's been your favorite memory? Winning the national championship. I said that's one of my favorite memories. Even though I registered that year, I never won a championship, so that's something I will always remember. That championship ring, where is it going to be 15 years from now? It's probably going to be sitting up somewhere. I'm uh, nah, I'm, I'm gonna keep that here. I ain't gonna, <laughs> I can't keep that as my only championship, so. I'm gonna I'm hold on close to it. It's gonna be somewhere where I can, where I can always see it. All right, well that's Inside the Helmet. Thanks for joining us. It took a while for Justin Motlow to process what happened against Delaware State. Claw ball, touchdown FSU. What a great snag by Justin Motlow. Justin Motlow with his first career touchdown catch and it was a thing of beauty. I'm still kind of in shock of uh, catching my first touchdown pass. Uh, it's just, it's, com it's completely humbling and uh, so honored to just represent the tribe and represent Florida State as a school. It's just, it's an amazing feeling. Motlow became the first member of the Seminole Tribe to represent Florida State on the football field when he joined the team in 2014. And with his touchdown catch against the Hornets, he became the first to score as well. Once the ball snapped, uh, Ran my route, and, and once I saw the ball in the air, time just kind of stood still for a second, and I knew I was like, "This is this is mine. There's no chance I'm dropping it." And I came down with it, and just I was happier than I've ever been. And his teammates and coaches were just as excited. Coming back to the sideline, everybody was just so happy for me, and I think I, the entire team was on top of me, just saying good job, and they were really proud and all that. It was just it's an exhilarating feeling. Oh man, everybody was excited about that. Everybody was excited on their feet, jumping, just cheering everybody on. I know that meant a lot to him and his family as well, but like you said, that was an unbelievable catch and I'm happy for him. Now the walk-on will have this moment to cherish, the culmination of his career at Florida State. It feels amazing just knowing that like after four years of all the hard work, all the practices, everything that you put in off season, just everything, like knowing that it all paid off in one moment, it's just, an amazing feeling. Tough and physical. This is where it begins. No receiver spent more time here than Anquan Bolden. Caught by Bolden. Bolden 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown on Florida State. Who let them go? Sure, he was fast and ran great routes. But with Anquan, it was all about the strength. Anquan Bolin, touchdown FSU. Strong hands and a strong will to bowl you over on the way to the end zone. Anquan Bolin goes up, makes the catch, touchdown FSU. Anquan is back. And just like work done, he took a big heart to the NFL. Charity work brought him the 2015 NFL Man of the Year Award. Big heart and character. That's what I call strong. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win a football fantasy experience at KnowlesContest.com. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football. As you know by now, Florida State is headed to a bowl game for the 36th consecutive year. That's the best in the history of college football. This time around, the Knolls are headed to Shreveport and the Walk-On's Independence Bowl. A little bit about this game. It is going to be played on December 27th. It'll kick off at 1.30 Eastern time, be televised by ESPN. 
This bowl is the 11th oldest bowl game. It actually uh, is in its 42nd year and was established in 1976. The Florida State extends the streak. The good thing about going to a bowl, there's a lot of good things about going to a bowl, but you get 15 extra practices, and that's key for Florida State's team. In effect, the coaches will tell you it's like another spring practice, and the Knowles will get the benefit of that as they head to Shreveport. We'll head to break, and then we'll come back and continue on this edition of Inside Seminole Football. Welcome into Garnet and Gold Grub, presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Katherine Phillips, alongside award-winning chef Travis Johnson. He's the executive culinary director of Seminole Dining here at Florida State, and he's gonna walk us through a delicious game day recipe using natural gas. Chef, what do you have for us today? So today we're gonna make uh, one of my favorite side dishes, which is hush puppies, or okay. some people might call spoon bread. And um, so to get started today, we, cooking with the natural gas and cast iron. I have my oil going right now, and while this is heating up, let's go ahead and put the uh, recipe together. Let's do it. Okay. So the hush puppies are gonna have um, really two components. It's gonna be your, your wet and your dry, and then the consistency of those coming together is gonna give you uh, the, the fluffiness and, and really the full flavor that you're looking for. So on the, on the wet side, we start out with our heavy cream, and then we add a little bit of buttermilk. Chef, you want to help me? You can. Uh, I'll have you kind of whisk that in as I add items, and then we're going to add a little bit of our whole milk, two eggs, now that's the wet batter is all ready. Now let's get the dry together. And similar to the wet, we want to incorporate all the dry because we're using uh, baking powder and some flour, so we want to mix it in. So we're going to use the same technique with, uh, with the whisk. So I'll go ahead and add them, and if you want to uh, help me out, mix we'll do this. In. So we start out with our cornmeal, and then we're going to add our flour. A little bit of sugar. We want to bring some of that sweetness out. Some of our Cajun spice. A little bit of salt. This is the key, our baking powder. Adding just the right ratio of baking powder. Okay. Let's go ahead and mix that together. Perfect. Now the third component to this is what type of aromatics or fresh vegetables we wanna to add to this. Today we've selected some green onions, some red and uh, green peppers, onions, as well as to kick it up a notch, some poblano and serrano peppers. Okay. Typically we would take them, uh, put them in a uh, food processor, blend them completely and then fold them in. Gotcha. Add, add our serrano peppers, we'll add the poblanos, and see not only is this going to add some flavor and depth, but it's starting to add a lot of really good color too. It is. Okay, let's go ahead and start adding our dry. You want to slowly add it to this while I'm whisking. There you go. All right, now that we have our hush puppy mixture completely blended up, um, you can tell that it started to uh, congeal and set up. It really works best that once you get a good mixture, put it back in your refrigerator for about four or six hours. So it's definitely something you want to make ahead of time. Okay. Uh, the baking uh, powder will allow it to set up and you can see it's starting to get a little thick. Yeah. And that's going to help when we go ahead and cook in our hot oil. And I think our oil is ready to go. Let's go ahead and fry some of these hush puppies up. We got our grease at the perfect temperature, about 350 degrees. So you're going to be able to tell that these are done when they start floating to the top and they really take on that uh, kind of golden brown color. Okay. So how does having natural gas for this help you? I love using natural gas, especially when I'm pan frying something on the stove. Just because I can control the temperature, if I notice it's getting a little hot, I can adjust mm -hmm. in the flame and it's really reactive. Okay. So I know that I'm going to have the right cooking temperatures that I need. These are looking beautiful. So these could be served with uh, maybe a some jambalaya, a uh, pot of gumbo with uh, mac and cheese, uh, other southern dishes, collard greens. Um, pretty much anything. Pretty much anything. <laughs> you can eat them by themselves. <laughs> um, if you are going to eat them by yourself, today I made a whipped butter, but I did a compound butter that is oh, wow. a whipped Tabasco and honey butter. Wow. So a lot of different flavors going on, but complement the hush puppies really, okay. really well. Kind of spicy, kind of sweet. See if we can get a couple of these out. 
And those cook really quick. They cook pretty quick. The cook time is probably about two, maybe three minutes at the most. Really, once they start floating, they're, they're yeah. ready to go. Let's do this. Does that look beautiful inside? That looks perfect. We'll finish it with, this is that uh, whipped honey and Tabasco butter. And these are really hot. Those are amazing. The butter is so good. For full details on this recipe and more information on how you can incorporate natural gas at home, at your business, or at your next tailgate event, go to peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Welcome back. As we finish up on Inside Seminole Football and reflect back on 2017, obviously it wasn't the season that Florida State and its fans dreamed of, but the Knolls are bowling for a 36th consecutive year. That's the longest streak any school's ever had in the history of college football. And as 2018 arrives, we'll have a new coach and it'll be a new era of Florida State football. Until then, folks, happy holidays, happy new year. We'll see you next time right here on Inside Seminole Football. This has been Inside Seminole Football, brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Nick's Toggery, 